Okay, let's start seated. I think you can see everything. So sitting bones connected. And just remember that we're creatures of habit. So cross your legs the opposite way. And then just let the knees come as far toward the floor as they want. You can actually put one leg in front of the other and they'll probably come down a little bit further. Remember, you want those sitting bones behind you and the spine stacked just like mountain pose. Shoulders back and down and get that core connected, ribs in and up. And then crown toward the ceiling. And just, you can cup your hands around the knees or keep them in your lap. And we're gonna pull the ribs back and round forward. You get a good stretch, especially through that lower back. So kind of think about pushing the bottom ribs back even further. And then as you inhale, face forward, crown, reaching back as you lift your heart toward the ceiling, shoulders and shoulder blades dropping, and a little back bend. And again, bring those ribs really forward so you can feel that back, lower back area moving a lot. So exhaling, rounding forward, pushing it back. And inhaling, lifting your heart, shoulders down, ribs forward. And just a couple of times, just getting that spine moving today. Yeah, so we were in the car 20 hours because of all the charging time that the Tesla had to do. So that was a long ride from LA to Colorado. And then the last, oh, maybe 45 minutes, half hour, it was slushy snowy on the road at 2.30 a.m. Okay, then coming back straight up, shoulders down, bring one hand to the side, other arm out. Palm toward the ceiling and over your shoulders, slide for your lateral motion. So keeping the spine nice and straight, keep reaching out through your fingertips, arm by your ear. Bring your elbow down toward the floor and that'll give you a little extra stretch, but keep this back hip down. So sitting bones both still connected as you go into that side stretch. And then inhale back up, exhale your arm down. And just feel the ribs, the side that was stretching. Other hand down, arm out, palm toward the ceiling over your shoulder. Stretch up through the fingertips and slide over to the side. And again, just maximize or minimize. Remember, personal practice, hips staying down. Slide that hand out further or bend your elbow if that works for a little deeper stretch. Take a breath. Just relax. And then inhaling, come back straight up and release that arm. And again, just feel your whole body. And then whichever leg is in front or on top, hand to that opposite knee and arm up, shoulder level. Stretch the spine for our twist and exhale, follow the hand around. And when you get as far to the back as you want, bring it to the floor close to your body. Stretch up, breathing in, and exhale, and deepen. So as deep into your twist as you want, remember that hip you're turning away from can come up just a little bit, so the hip, rib, and shoulder all move into the twist. And then bring your hand back up, follow it back to the center, and release. Switch for that other leg in front or on top. So again, sitting bones connect, spine stacks, hand to that other knee and arm out in front. Shoulders, shoulder blades down, stretch your spine and exhale and twist. And again, deepen as much or as little as you like. Hand to the floor, stretch from the sitting bones up, exhale and again, hip coming along, ribs and shoulder turning for your twist. Take a breath, just relax. And then arm coming back up behind you, follow it back around to the center. Just feel all that stretch and 
circulation through the spine. And then lift your knees, bring those legs out in front. Sitting bones connect and push them back a little bit. Press the bottoms of your feet out and pull the toes back. Core connected, so ribs in and up, shoulders and shoulder blades down and crown to the ceiling. So let's bring one foot up to your inner thigh and let the knee come out to the side. And then keep this kneecap straight up to the ceiling and the toes up to the ceiling on your extended leg. Bring your hands to your sides, out to shoulder level, turn them palms up over your shoulders. Stretch up through the fingers and the top of your head down into the sitting bones. As you exhale, really sink into the sitting bones, hands to your shoulders. So really, again, stretching through your spine up and exhale and release. And one more time, stretch way up. Exhale, pivot chest and chin forward. Reach your hands for your foot or the floor or your leg. And then push the sitting bones back a little bit more and pull your chest and chin maybe a little closer towards your knee. And then to make sure that you're not rounding forward with your forehead toward the floor, bring the crown up to the ceiling and really straighten your back. So again, keep pushing those sitting bones behind your body and then drop your chest and chin again a little closer toward the leg. So if you're really flexible, you may make it all the way down or you probably won't. So just go as far as it feels okay for the back of your leg and to keep your spine still straight. So your hands can be on your leg or the floor or around your foot if that's working for you. And again, chest and chin down, crown toward the toes, toes pulling back. And then releasing your hands and bring your arms next to your ears, pull those shoulders and shoulder blades back toward your waist and pivot up. Stretch high. And exhale the arms back down. Lift your knee, arm out, or leg out to the front. So take a moment there, just feel your body and notice how your spine is a little bit more stretched out. And we'll do the other side. So again, sitting bones back, spine nice and straight, core active, and bring the opposite foot to the inner thigh. And again, just keep adjusting those sitting bones back, getting that pivot right at the top of the thighs and that leg extending straight forward. Knee up, toes up. And again, hands to your side, keep the shoulders and shoulder blades down, arms reaching to the sides at shoulder level, palms rotating toward the ceiling and over your shoulders. Stretch it up, exhale, hands to your shoulders, sink into the sitting. And again, lengthen from the sitting bones all the way up through the crown and the fingertips. Stretch it out. Exhale one more time down. So really connect into the sitting bones and then stretch up again. Exhale, pivot the sitting bones back as you come forward, chest and chin leading, reach for that foot. Again, hands wherever they feel right for your body, dropping to your foot or the floor or your leg. And again, Make sure that that upper body stays nice and straight. So the pivot is at the top of the thigh and you're bringing your chest and chin down. So crown coming up a little bit more, straighten and stretch your spine really long. And exhale, deepen a little further, chest and chin down toward the leg. Remember, kneecap toward your thigh so that back of the leg gets a nice stretch while it's extended forward. And again, just take a moment there, stretching and breathing and deepening as much as you'd like. And then releasing your hands from wherever they are. Bring your arms again next to your ears. Shoulders and shoulder blades again towards your waist and pivot up and release back down with those arms. Lift your knee, both legs out to the front. So once more, just feel the spine a little bit more stretched out. And we're gonna do both legs to the front this time. So a real pivot at the top of those thighs, right at that hip joint, 
on both legs. So push those sitting bones back a little bit more behind you. Stretch up through the spine. And then again, hands to your sides, right out at shoulder level. Palms toward the ceiling. Keep those shoulder blades down as you bring your hands over your shoulders. Stretch the spine, sitting bones down, crown and fingertips up. Exhale, hands to your shoulders. Stretch way, way out. Exhale and sink. Now one more really good stretch up, maybe even a little higher and chest and chin lead. Reach those hands toward your feet and push your sitting bones back. So again, keep the kind of ribs pulling toward your thighs, chest and chin toward your knees and top of your head reaching out toward your toes as those toes pull back. Kneecaps toward your thighs to let the back of your legs sink down as much as is comfortable. So again, just keep adjusting into the position. Keep bringing that crown up, lengthening so that spine stays nice and straight, and then maybe pivoting a little deeper. So the hamstrings will get quite a stretch. The spine will get quite a stretch as long as you keep the crown reaching toward the toes. And the more you pivot, the deeper that lower back stretch will get. So just as far as your body wants to go, and then remember, relax as you exhale, maybe push a little further. So chest and chin really coming down toward your knees and ribs in toward your thighs. Keep that head reaching way out. Breathing. You can have your hands on the legs or the floor or on your toes. Keep the toes pulling back. And then bring the arms again back towards shoulder level, right at your ears. And pivot up, keeping the shoulders and shoulder blades down. And exhale and release. And back into staff pose. So remember, kneecaps staying up, face of the feet pressing out, hands next to you on the floor. So bring the arms out, shoulder level, palms toward the floor. We're going to stretch way up through the spine, and we're going to do a twist. So as you exhale, keep those arms straight out as much as you can as you turn to look toward the side. So one hand coming forward toward your feet, the other straight behind you, and your face is looking to the side. So your whole upper body is in the twist. The side you're turning toward, you can have that hip pull back a little bit extra. And then stretch up. And again, we're gonna exhale and push the hand toward the feet in front. Push it a little bit further. And then inhale back facing the side and exhale pivoting back around to the center and release the arms. Feel your spine a little bit more twisted. And remember, you want that whole body turning into the twist. You don't want to keep both sitting bones planted as you move into the twist. So you want to keep that if you're turning toward pulling back so that your whole spine can get a move. And we'll do the other side. Arms out, shoulder level. Shoulders and shoulder blades stay down. Crown reaches high. Really stretch it apart. Exhale. Arms next to you or right across from each other as you turn to the side as far as your body wants to go. And again, hand toward that front foot, other hand straight behind, wherever your angle is. Stretch up through the spine. Exhale, pull that hip you're turning toward back as you turn your whole body and push a little further hand toward your feet. Take a breath. Exhale, maybe deepen a little further. And then inhale back straight up, shoulder blades down, hands staying where they are as you pivot back to the center and release your arms. Take a moment, feeling your whole spine, maybe a little bit more energized, especially in that lower back area. Core focused, so ribs in and up. And then we're gonna come onto plank position. So just pivot over, and hands, palms down to the floor, really come up on your fingertips, knuckles down, base of the fingers down, palm down, heel of the palm down. Shift your shoulders right over the wrists. 
and then extend your feet out behind you so your legs are straight and your whole body comes into that nice plank position, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, everything lined up. So get that core really active, ribs up towards your spine and up towards your heart and crown reaching one way, heels the other. If that's too much, remember, you can pivot a little bit at that hip joint and lift your hips just a little bit, but keep the core really active and supporting you. So the ribs up and core supporting. Or bring your knees down to the floor and do the knee down position if that's more appropriate for your back. So ribs up, kind of sitting bones towards your heels, heels and crown pressing away and ribs lifting. And then either shift forward so your shoulders are over your fingers, bend your elbows and come all the way down, or knees first down and lower your upper body. And then when we get all the way down on your belly, head to one side, hands, palms up, and just take a moment to recline the earth. Crocodile reclined integration on your belly. After a couple of rests with your head to one side, exhale, head to the opposite side. So get that neck stretching evenly. And then forehead toward the floor. Slide your chin forward. And we're going to do locust. So palms to the floor, shoulders to the floor, shin sliding forward, feet hip width apart. Keep the left hip, left leg down and stretch that right foot back through the base of the toes, and then lift that leg, keeping it straight. Stretch it out, lift it maybe a little higher. Then again, just maximize. So keep both hip bones down. You don't ever have to lift this hip that's on the leg rising if you don't want to. And just get that lower back getting a little bit of work into that contraction. Keep stretching out through the base of your toes, forward through the chin. And then stretch the toes out and exhale, the leg to the floor. Tuck your forehead down, get that neck stretched again, just relaxing. And then of course, balance the body with the other side. So once again, chin forward, shoulders down, palms down, slightly away from your sides as much as right for your shoulders. Sink into the hip bones, stretch the toes back, especially the left foot. And this time keep that left leg straight as you bring it, the foot up. So the hip bones both stay down. You're raising that leg only as high as your body feels comfortable. And then keep stretching out through the base of your toes. Chin forward. If that neck gets too much, just tuck your forehead down. Stretch it out, hip bones is pressing down evenly as you can. Lift that leg only as high as it's right for you. And then slowly keep stretching it out as you exhale the leg to the floor. Forehead down, hands under your shoulders. And go ahead and press back into child's pose. So just coming back into that forward bend, just give a good stretch through that lower back. And relax. And then leg, or sorry, arms out in front, shoulder width, plant the palms, and pivot up on your hands and knees. And then make sure your hands are a little bit in front of your shoulders. We're going to go up into down dog. So tuck your toes under, hip width apart, knees hip width apart as well. And then just lift those knees barely off the floor. Pull your chest all the way in towards your thighs, arms. Ears right next to your shoulders, and then push the hips up, sink the heels down, and get into your V shape. Rest the sitting bones way up and back, head toward your hands, really planted into the hands, sinking those heels as much toward the floor as they want. And then bend one knee, press the opposite heel more toward the floor. Keep lifting through those sitting bones, Shoulder blades still toward your waist. And exhale that heel down and bend the other leg and press the heel 
of that first growth day. So maximize as much as it wants. Keep stretching from your hands, elbows, shoulders, up through the sitting bones, and then exhaling, heel toward the floor. And then walk your hands back toward your toes. I come into ragdoll. Chin in toward your chest, ribs lifting, and work your way slowly, unwinding your spine up into mountain pose. So as you come all the way up, just feel all that circulation through your whole spine. And check that your feet are hip width apart, toes forward, sitting bones down, ribs in and up, shoulders and shoulder blades down, crown to the ceiling. I think I need to step aside a little bit. So again, as you come into that position, let's just keep the spine open. So sitting bones and base of the spine down and base of the skull and crown up. And really stretch that spine and we'll do our little windmill motion. So hands going to one side and then going around to the other and just following with your gaze, following with your head. So your whole body is turning into that twist. So just keep rotating as much or as little as your body wants. Spread your toes, get the weight of both feet evenly. And just maybe as that spine releases a little bit, turn a little further toward whatever's behind you. I happen to have an exercise bike there today. So just keep rotating with those shoulders down, arms just relaxed as you rotate your whole body, following with your gaze. And then coming back to the center, just stay there for a moment, getting things recentered and grounded. And we'll reach the crown to the ceiling. And let's work the arms a little bit. So shoulders coming around into that backstroke swimming kind of stroke. So arm right near your ear as much as you can. And notice that your whole body moves as we go through this range of arm motion. So that spine is still getting a little bit of a twist as you work through that backstroke. And then bringing both arms down, feet hip width apart, we're going to clasp the elbows behind you or reverse prayer. Remember, fingertips up by your shoulder blades, palms pressing as much toward each other as they can. That's just going to keep your shoulders even. So if you want to just clasp your elbows, that's fine. And then we're going to do those hip circles. So big circles around with your hips. And just feel your whole body work, especially through that lower back, getting nice big circles going. And then stop and go the opposite way. So again, hips going to one side and forward, opposite side and sitting bones back. And just going through that range of motion as wide a circle as your body feels is working for you. And then release that and come back into mountain pose. Just take a moment again, feel the circulation. So hands to prayer. Feet still hip width apart, spread your toes, keep the shoulders and shoulder blades always toward your waist. And then palms pressing together, just look at them as you raise your hands toward the ceiling and look up. Fingertips toward the ceiling. Pull the thumbs back and lift your heart and keep those hips over your ankles as you come into a little bit more of a back bend through that lower back. So remember, what's right for your body, don't go too far. Stretch the chest up and the top of your head back as you look at your heels. And then bringing the hands back slowly, upright your spine and body as you exhale, hands to your heart. And then drop all the way down into ragdoll. Just take a moment there, breathing, relaxing, chin tucked in, top of the head toward the floor, lift the sitting bones. Feel that whole back getting a good forward bend stretch. Hands behind your legs, really pull it in for a little extra stretch if you want to. And then arms back to the front, chin in. Lift your ribs, sitting bones down, knees bent. Keep that chin in as you wind all the way back up. Shoulders up, back and down. 
and mountain pose once again. So just take a moment there, feel what's going on for your body. And we're going to step wide. So feet coming wide, toes straight ahead. And if they feel like they're sliding apart because you're not on a mat or cushiony surface, you can angle those heels out just a little bit so that you have a little more stability. Thumbs to that hip crease right at the top of the thigh. We're gonna again pivot from there, chest and chin lead. Bring your body till it's parallel to the floor. So crown reaching forward, sitting bones back, and as much parallel as you can. So kneecaps lifting to your thighs, tighten the front of your thighs. Nice stretch through the back of your legs. Stretch out and breathe. And then slide your hands down towards your ankles and pull your chest and chin even further in toward that space between your legs, reaching the sitting bones back and the crown forward as you keep your back as flat and straight as you can. So stretch it out, keep breathing, ribs in and still toward your heart. And then reach the sitting bones and crown away and pivot slowly back up. And just take a moment feeling all that circulation, especially in that lower back. So we're going to do something a little different. And if it's not comfortable for you, you can just do that pivot and bring your hands back to your leg. Otherwise, we're going to bring the arms out to the sides. Get really grounded into your feet, and we're going to do that same pivot. So chest and chin lead, sitting bones back, and crown forward, arms straight out at shoulder level as you pivot forward. So if that's not comfortable, remember, bring your hands down to your legs, however they go. And then we're going to stretch the sitting bones and crown away from each other, and we're going to go into a twist. So just pivot. One arm going up, the other one straight across from it, coming down as much as you can keep them straight across. Remember, straight spine, stretching it apart, letting it twist the whole spine. And then again, rotating till you're again, everything parallel to the floor. Keep those arms stretching out as you pivot up and release. So take a moment, feel the spine a little bit more energized from the twist. We're gonna do the twist, of course, to the opposite side. So once again, that pivot at the hip joint, bring the arms out at shoulder level, keep them straight, reaching out through your fingertips, chest and chin lead, reach that spine apart. So hips back, sitting bones back, crown forward. Stretch it out. Come as parallel to the floor as feels right for your body. And then again, we're going to pivot into the twist. So keep the spine stretching apart, arms right across from each other, and pivot looking toward that opposite side. So arms as straight across from each other as you can manage. Spine still as straight as you can manage working into your twist. Take a breath. Exhale and pivot back parallel to the floor. Stretch it out and pivoting up. Arms still shoulder level. Stretch up toward the ceiling, looking up. Hands together, coming down to your heart and step into the mountain pose. Hands releasing. Spine stretching apart. And oh yeah, it's relaxation time. So go ahead and stretch up. Exhale over. All the way to the mat, child's pose just for our transition. Or if you love child's pose and you like that lower back stretch, you can stay in child's pose for our relaxation. So go ahead and bring your feet to the end of the mat if you're going into corpse position. Core active, rolling onto your back and coming into relaxation posture. So you can stay in corpse position. I mean, you can stay in child's pose if you prefer, or you can sit up and roll back into corpse position. 
Or you can also always relax and rest in crocodile. So take a moment to breathe. Just exhale any tension. Hands, palms up, whichever position you're in. And just take a moment to let those shoulders sink. Sitting bones towards your heels if you're on your back or stomach. And relax. So soften your whole body. Let that lower back get a really good release. So just get a little arch up through that lower back is just fine. If you feel like that lower back needs a little extra release, you can sit in bones towards your heels and bend your knees and either put something under or bring the knees together for support and keep them bent if you're in corpse position. And take a few moments there, just releasing any tension in your whole body. So deep breaths, exhaling, just relaxing, and allowing your whole body to sink into that surface beneath you. Deep breaths, exhaling and relaxing, letting your body go. Just soften and sink deeper into that earth embrace. Exhale and relax completely. As your body sinks deep into that foot support, just let it go. No need to think about your body whatsoever. Just relax completely. Letting thoughts of your body release from your mind. As those thoughts release, new thoughts will come to you. Remember, it's always the job of your mind producing those thoughts. Let them go. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. No need for content of any thoughts. Just let it drift away as easily as you like. And as your thoughts drift more freely, and your body relaxes completely, just allow thoughts of your body to release, thoughts in your mind to release. And just let peace be your focus, deepening that awareness deep within you. Filling your body with peace, filling your mind with peace. Just be peace. As always, if you want to keep relaxing, just be able to relax and release as long as you have time. Otherwise, begin breathing more deeply, drawing energy and awareness back to the mind, to the room, to your body. And just begin stretching your body gently whenever you're ready to do so, moving it however feels right for you. Giving yourself a good stretch if that feels right, whenever that feels right. And when you're ready for your yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones towards your heels, drawing the heels in towards your hips, back to the mat, and knees towards your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself that appreciative yoga hug, and let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work it does for you every day. When you're ready to release, feet to the floor, roll them to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead today for you.
thanks for joining me.